Welcome back, West Michigan. We are at Mercy Heart Center. I'm Linda Balkema, and I'm speaking with Deb Skinner. And we are talking about risk factors for women in particular, but heart attacks in general, and, sure. a, and a big concern. And uh, let's go over some of those risk factors, or warning signs, I should say, the warning okay. signs. So warning signs for women with possible heart attack. Is that what we're talking yes, about? Yes, exactly. Okay, again, women can kind of display symptoms differently than their male counterparts. Not to say they can't have the same Sure. kind of symptoms, the chest pain, the left arm involvement, the jaw problems, but sometimes they might have some unexplained dizziness, lightheaded, you know, just feel a little off. You know, abdominal pain is not uncommon. Um, sometimes they might feel a little sick to their stomachs or some abdominal pain that's not necessarily um, a problem for them in the past. There might okay. be acute, meaning coming on all of a sudden. Um, so again, definitely signs that aren't as common in their male counterparts, but it's really individualized. It is. And right. one thing we want to make a point of, we don't want to make everybody afraid out there. This isn't a fear factor that we're trying to scare you all into because for one thing, our emergency departments are overutilized and we don't want everybody rushing to the emergency right. room. But right. if it's acute pain, if it's severe right. pain, please, that's what the emergency room is for. Um, and another thing is, you know, go to your doctor if you are recognizing some of these symptoms or if you have other risk factors, high cholesterol is one of them. But if you have sure. that coupled with, I know, sure. like high blood pressure. And that's exactly it. And, or you're a mm -hmm. smoker and you have some of those other risk mm -hmm. factors and you start to experience some of these symptoms, then, sure. you know, if you can't get into your doctor and get it checked out, you know, go to urgent care. Go, you know, we we want people to be safe and do what sure. they should do, you know. And, and one other thing for men and women who've had heart attacks, have they had one before? Right. You know, so sometimes when they can compare to what they're feeling now, to what they felt like then, that kind of, you know, makes it a little bit easier to sure. delineate, you know, yeah, maybe this is you something can recognize more those symptoms that if I you've might had need it to one go time. in, yes. right? But it's not necessarily the case all the time where their symptoms are the same every time, but it does help kind of differentiate what's going on. Well, sure, we hope to avoid you ever having the first heart attack, That's right. but we want you right. to recognize those signals mm -hmm. because for women in particular, heart disease is on the rise, heart attacks are on the rise, and we're living longer. We want to Absolutely. be want to be healthy longer. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a, one of the things we should talk about here is we've got all kinds of fun things behind us yeah. that shows us, I bet, we could bring this down and you sure. could show us some sure. arterial sclerosis maybe? Am I yeah. saying that right? It's just kind of like hardening of the arteries, Heart which yes, is an old fashioned term. Okay. But basically, I don't know if you can mm -hmm. get yeah. this, yeah. but basically what this is, is showing a blood vessel in the heart and it shows up over time as plaque develops in that blood vessel. Now obviously this one here looks good because there's no plaque built up in the artery. And this is showing some fatty plaque buildup, which is covering about maybe a quarter of that space. And then we've got a moderate narrowing of the artery, which shows even more, probably 75% occlusion. Know, that's scary. And, and again, patients at this point may or may not have symptoms. Yep. You know, they may have some chest pain, which we can call angina which is, you know, some some suggestive signs of some heart disease, but it hasn't made itself known yet. Okay. So that could be noted there. And then here, of course, is a complete occlusion and eventual rupture oh. of a blood vessel where people are experiencing chest pain and eventually have a heart attack and all kinds of problems can ensue from that. Oh, that. Now here's a question I yeah. have. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you've developed to this point or right. this point, right. can you reverse it back to this point? Can you, is there a way to reverse heart disease? Well, first of all, you have to identify it. Okay. And then to identify it, you would have a cardiac catheterization, which is um, in very invasive, but it is the gold standard for yeah. heart evaluations sure. today. Um, but what they would do is take a catheter and they would go in through your groin is generally okay. the location, and they the go up into yeah. your heart, okay. right? And then they inject dye, and then they look at the patency of all these blood vessels. And if they were to notice that the plaque was building up, they could maybe put in a stent or a balloon and try to open up that blood vessel a little bit more so that blood can get through a little bit easier. And hopefully it would diminish any symptoms of angina they were having. Um, now sometimes what happens is they'll go in and there'll be so many blood vessels involved that they end up doing what's called a bypass. And a bypass, of course, is like um, what we call a cabbage in healthcare terms, cabbage. where they go in mm -hmm, okay. and they bypass three or four vessels to try to reroute all of this into a 
cleaner vessel. Yeah, I'm well, thinking of it in terms of piping, okay. Yeah, so. kind of like that. But then you would hopefully have functioning, um, functioning blood vessels again, and everything would be much better for that individual. They'd okay. have to go through a rehab and so forth. But um, we do a lot of that today. I mean, that's okay. how we're of, saving lives. A bypass surgery. Yeah. Bypass so surgery. What, once mm -hmm. once bypass has been performed. Mm -hmm. Then are we looking at now they're hopefully flowing, they're back to this kind of flow level? and Because of the stent, because of the bypass, because of the balloon. There are some testing um, that is being done to try to reverse some of this. Now you got to remember, you know, there are some cholesterol agents that claim that they can do a little bit of reversal on this. Uh -huh. But there's really some more sophisticated tests out there that have to okay. be done to really confirm all of that. Um, but generally, um, you know... I, like me, myself, I wouldn't go in and have a, a diagnostic cardiac cath at this point because I don't really have any symptoms. And that's the sure. only way you're going to pick up some of that stuff. Right. You know, you're going to go in and have a cath only if you're having problems. You're not going to go in because you're feeling good. Right. You well, know? what scares me looking yeah. at this yeah. is, is um, you know, I know I have high cholesterol and, and mm -hmm. you start thinking, wow, am, sure. I, am I this plugged up? Am I this? Right. You know, so you don't right. know. It is, it is a risk factor and so we have to we have to work on prevention yeah we, well you know what we... the number one prevention with all of this that we're talking about is get your lipid profile checked get your lipid profile. you know I get it checked every year and it doesn't change. Are, are really an important concept in health promotion today um, a lipid profile is a simple lab test you have to be fasting for 12 hours mm -hmm. get your lipid profile checked it will look at your cholesterol your triglycerides your good and your bad cholesterol mm -hmm. and that gives us a ratio and depending on what those numbers are, it's going to determine what your risk is for this.